Hi, my name is Robin and it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Today, I'm going to talk about the OpenAI GPT-3 independent publisher connector I contributed. This is available in all your tenants, in all your Power Platform environments, as long as it's not blocked by DLP. So you can set this up in a few minutes yourself, what I'm showing today. Let's take a first look at OpenAI. You may have probably heard about the company does a lot of AI stuff. Uh, yeah, what is news uh, right now is one of the image generation um, models, the DAL E2 model, but that has no API probably in the future. Um, so today we're going to talk about GPT-3. And what is GPT-3? It's short for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer 3. It's an auto-regressive language model that uses deep learning. I have no idea what all of this means. Um, I have no idea about AI, but uh, it's so easy to use. We're going to look into that right now because it produces human-like text. What can you do with it? Um, some examples, of course, this thing can do writing and probably some of the news you are reading are uh, already written by AI, probably by GPT-3, and this can do excellent fiction writing and is really creative. This thing you see it in the top in the picture is trained by 45 terabytes of data. So this thing basically knows the whole internet and at least the whole uh, of Wikipedia, lots and lots of books. So uh, it's really smart. It can bring up answers in a matter of seconds. Um, and this thing speaks multiple languages and you don't set the language anywhere. You just start talking to it in language and it will respond in the uh, according language. Um, while English works the best, German is also a language this thing understands. And also programming languages. And you will probably have heard um, of this thing before, the Ideas tab in the Canvas App Editor. And this is actually powered by this model by GPT-3. Of course, there's a little bit more magic going on in the background and it's uh, trained a little bit further so it can produce um, PowerFX. But uh, this thing can um, also uh, already, the standard model can already produce um, programming languages like um, HTML and others. So before we get into demo time, um, I'm going to take you on a quick tour to get started and uh, get your API key to use my connector. Um, setting up an account is uh, done in a few minutes and these things actually cost money. But when you set up your account, um, you get three months of free trial and $18 in credit, which is uh, lots to play around with this stuff and get started. So you don't have to plug in credit card data. You can set this up in a few minutes and get going without paying a cent. And where you should start is uh, the playground because this is basically what uh, my connector can can do. And this will look very familiar if we look into uh, into Power Automate in a second. And first of all, um, we're going to plug in our first prompt. The, the string we are giving to the model is called a prompt. Um, I was basically doing the thing that was in the hint text, but I um, included a little bit more. So we are plugging in the prompt and we are getting a response back. This is yeah um, probably more creative than I would have been and makes absolute sense for an ice cream shop tagline. And you see how easy it was. And basically, we're doing the same thing with the API. There are some uh, presets there down here that you can also um, change in the API. You should get familiar with them through the playground. The most important is probably the engine that is in the background. And when you want to have human-like text, you should use the text Da Vinci engine, which is the most uh, the most expensive one. But um, yeah, you can get familiar with the pricing and stuff. And as I said, you start with enough credits to play around a lot, even with this model. And um, you should also check out the examples um, right here because manufacturing your prompt is a science in itself. So let's look at one of my favorite examples. It's Marv the, where is it? Marv the sarcastic chatbot right here. 
we open it in the playground, get back to the playground and get your prompt plugged in presets a little bit changed, but not too much. And now we're going to look at a little bit longer prompt right here. Um, it's separated in the first step. This is the warm up um, where you just set the scene for the model so it knows what you're expecting of it. And then you double down on that with this is called a few shot uh, learning approach where you give on the spot a few examples um, that you make sure you get the results just as you want them. So we are giving here uh, like four results or, or anything. And um, then we can plug in it's already everything set up we hit submit and marv gives an sarcastic answer right now uh, lots of fun to play around with this example and one more thing um, the model picks up really well when you use the column so you colon marv colon that it's a dialogue between um, you and the model itself because we told the model that it's called marv right now so this is a technique that works really well um, this isn't programmed into the model. It's an AI. They just found out manufacturing prompts in this way works really, really well. So let's jump into Power Automate first to see this um, through the Power Platform connector. We will set up a new flow. Probably not because it doesn't seem to work right now. So let's give it one more try. Now it works. Just an instant cloud flow, which we will trigger manually and then add in a new step, open AI. And once again, this should be in your tenant as well. And this only has one endpoint, the most important one, the completion endpoint. And um, this is the defaults that I plugged in, which I would think would showcase it a little from the get go. We save it and test it for one time. So you see the same things you could, uh, you could uh, put in in the playground and continue. When you do it for the first time, of course, you have to set up a connection, enter your API key you get from the OpenAI website, really easy to find. And we will run the flow and get our first response back through the API. There it is. And we ask what is the model's favorite animal and why? And the favorite animal is an elephant because they end intelligent and loyal, also very large and impressive, can weigh up to six or seven tons. Don't know if that is correct, but sounds impre impressive. Uh, I want to point out one thing. Um, if you are not too familiar with, with response objects or JSON objects you are getting right here, um, we get this response object and then it has this nested uh, object, the choices, uh, which can have multiple records and we generally want the first choice uh, and then the text property of that. That is uh, yeah, important. We will look at the uh, at the source code in um, our second example in a second. And this is the chatbot. It's a little bit like the like the playground, like chatting with Marv, but in a yeah in a Canvas app you can use on your smartphone really well. And this is actually in the Power Apps samples repo. I will plug a link in the end. And if you like design, then you should listen really carefully to Christina's uh, presentation because this is from her from her new Morphic design kit, which I used uh, to to make this look more beautiful. I will plug a link at the end as well. So let's get started and ask the model what its favorite movie is. And the favorite movie is Shawshank Redemption. Indeed, a good one. And let's ask for a short synopsis of the movie. And we will get a perfect synopsis. It's a little bit longer. It's uh, ended because I set the, the yeah, end condition to narrow. I think it would have uh, wrote a little bit longer, but this uh, probably does make a lot of sense and the rest would have made a lot of sense as well. I want to um, add one more detail right here. Um, this thing picks up context phenomenally. 
So uh, I was just asking to write a short synopsis. And of course, the model knows that I want a synopsis about the movie Shawshank Redemption. And how does this work? Let's look a little bit here. Which prompt did we did we send before? Um, in each text we are sending again, we are including the whole conversation um, for the prompt. So the uh, model can also pick up on the context and give better answers right here. And then we're going to look at the second little demo app. I have um, equally lots of fun with that. It's my sample data generator. Um, which sample data are we uh, want to generate right here? We want five capitals of European cities, uh, countries, sorry. And we get Paris, London, Rome, Madrid, and Berlin. This makes sense as well. So we were uh, uh, asking GPT-3 right here with our first call. This is a call to the Google image search. Um, so no GPT-3 involved in here. And we get a really nice sample image. We can scroll through some of them. And we can ask GPT-3 again for more information for a short description of the subject. And then we get a description about uh, Paris, London, Rome, and so on. And we can ask for another thing, and we will ask for famous sites in the city of Star. And then internally, the star gets replaced with the city. And we will add this sublist right here. So for Paris, we get Eiffel Tower, Notre Dame Cathedral, and so on which uh, seems to make a lot of sense. And yeah, I just love playing around with this and learning about uh, different stuff through this uh, app. So I'm having a lot of fun and we are looking for the wrap up. We are looking for the API call we are making um, through the Canvas app right here. We are calling the OpenAI independent publisher connector, the completion endpoint, which is the only one again available plugging in the Da Vinci model, and then we are setting it up just like we did it in the playground. We are using a warm up and then a few short learning where I provide for, uh, four examples of um, sample data that's, that is generated. And to process the data, it's uh, important for me to have it separated by semicolons, which I also say in the warm up. And um, then what I said earlier, we want the first um, set of data from the choices object. And from there, we want the text. That is what we're usually after. And then we are splitting the whole thing by semicolons. And that is where we're getting a nice uh, collection we can work with. Ah, couldn't find any data. That's sad, but here you can see that uh, data is displayed through this um, collection. And then, of course, we are doing um, exactly or similar things again with the description and the sublist and adding it to the collection. And that is it for my samples. I'm going to plug the links in the in the chat and don't know how we proceed. Do we have time for some questions? Or but usually the, the questions get asked. Thing? Yeah, the questions get asked in the uh, chat. So definitely, I believe there were some questions, Robin. Excellent. This is a super, super cool. Um, really love how you've created it to be a little bit more fun and showed some business use cases for it. Uh, really, really flexible in terms of what you can do with this connector. So if you haven't checked it out, definitely go check it out. Thank you for the links uh, that are in the chat. Uh, and by the way, yes, this was Chuck Norris approved. So just in case you were wondering. So excellent job, Robin. Thank you. Thank you.